Well, good morning. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. We just praise God and we thank God because he's brought us through another week. Amen. Listen, I'm just grateful that you're here with us this, this day that we're celebrating the Lord. We're celebrating. We're here today just to lift up the name of Jesus. We're just here today to glorify him. We're here today to give him praise. We're here today to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Why? Because he brought me a mighty long way. Listen, your long way might have been different than mine. Your long way might have just been this week. My long way might have been for the last six months of this year. But through it all, God's grace is good. His grace is sufficient. And he's brought us all. He's brought us all this way. So we give him praise today. We glorify him today. We lift his name up and we just praise him and we just thank him and we just know. For it had not been on the Lord on our side, where would we be today? Amen? Amen. So listen. I just want to open us up with a word of prayer as you're entering into the sanctuary. Just give God some praise. Get yourself comfortable. Be, uh, uh, I hope you have your Bible in your hand. You have your paper, your pen, because we're going to get into the word of God this day. God, God is going to be glorified. The people are going to be blessed. Amen. So as you're entering into the sanctuary, I just want to say good morning to you. I just want to say thank you. God bless you for coming to fellowship with us here at Manor from Heaven Ministries. We don't take it lightly that you're here with us at this time. Amen. Amen. So as you're entering in again, good morning. Listen, I want to just open us up with a word of prayer. We just want to lift the name of the Lord. We just want to continue to usher his presence into this sanctuary, not just this sanctuary, but the sanctuary where you are also, that the Lord may be magnified, that he may be glorified, that you may feel his presence in that sanctuary. Amen. Amen. All right. So I just want to open us up. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time of coming together. We thank you for this time of fellowshipping. Father, we thank you for this time, O oh Lord, that we're able to come to be seated at your throne of grace, that we may hear a word from heaven. Father, we have nothing to present to your people except that which you have given unto us. And Father, I present it this day your word, for it is your word that you sent that healed them. It is your word that you sent that set the captives free. And it is your word that is going out into the atmosphere this day that it shall not come back to you void, that it must accomplish the thing that you sent it to do. So, Father, we thank you for your word as it's going forth now. We thank you for your word as your children are gathering from the north, the south, the east, and the west, that they are gathering to hear this word, O oh Lord, that their minds may be centered, that their hearts may be uh, uh, nurtured to receive this life-changing, this breath-changing, this rhema word today in the name of Jesus. Father, you said in your word that we have not because we ask not. And right now, Lord, we're just asking for your peace peace to saturate the sanctuary. Right now, Lord, we're asking that your spirit will just have its way in the midst of this sanctuary. Father, we're asking right now in the name of Jesus that you will continue to magnify your presence, O oh Lord. Even that as I uh, give me to speak, Lord, even not as I prepared, but as your spirit will lead me that in the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you now for your children who have assembled themselves, O oh Lord, for no form or fashion, but just to hear the word of God. Father, we know that you're not a God that disappoints because you're always on time, so your word is a pointed word at this time. So we thank you now, Father. We thank you, O oh Lord, that your word will do what it was purposed to do, that it will break the yokes of the enemy off of these, your children. Father, we serve Satan. Notice this day that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice in spite of whatever it may be. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. So, Father, right now, Lord, as I decrease, may your spirit magnify itself in this vessel, Lord, that even as your people are assembled this time, that they may uh, see me, but let them hear you through me, through this vessel. Father, I give you praise, I give you the honor, and I glorify you for choosing and using me at this time in a season such as now. Lord, be magnified. Be thou magnified. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen again. Good morning. God bless you again. Listen, I know the presence of the Lord is here because I feel him in the atmosphere. I fear him. I feel him. So I know he's there where you are also. Amen. Listen, we're going to break this bread today. We're just going to give God praise. We're going to glorify him. Amen. Welcome again. Welcome again. So listen, this morning, if you have your Bibles ready, the word is going to be coming from the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And we're going to read Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Amen. Zechariah 3, verses 1 through 5, and Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Amen. Amen. All right. So it's going to read as such. Then the Lord, Zechariah 3, 1 through 5, 
Then, the, then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan at his right hand to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Indeed, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a log snatched from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed, verse 3 tells us, Now Joshua was clothed in filthy garments and was standing before the angel. And he responded and said to those who were standing before him, saying, Remove the filthy garments from him. And again, he said to him, See, I have taken your guilt away from you and will clothe you with festive robes. Then I said, Have them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed them with garments while the angel of the Lord was standing by. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. And the word is blessed and the children are blessed. So we're going to minister the word in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have thy way, Lord. Good morning again. Good morning. Listen. For those of you who've never been into a courtroom before, allow me to uh, 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 take you into a courtroom, uh, a, a spiritual courtroom and a uh, natural courtroom. Amen. So, so in the both courts, there's a defendant, and in this case, you're going to be the defendant. Uh, the defendant, when I say defendant, defendant meaning the one who's uh, been accused of committing a crime. The defendant is the one who's been accused of committing a crime. So as you're standing in the courtroom now, you need to know that you're the defendant. You've been accused of committing a crime, all right? Listen, in the natural court, the defendant, is if he's already in the custody of the court, uh, they usually, the uh, person who's usually in the custody of the court, they usually make their appearance into the uh, courtroom, usually wearing an, an orange jumpsuit. They wear an orange jumpsuit and it has the initials D-O-J on the back of it, on the back of the jumpsuit. Uh, 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 the, the natural courtroom as well as the spiritual courtroom, uh, the defendant is usually represented by a lawyer. Now, either you supply yourself with a lawyer, and if you can't afford one, then the court would appoint a lawyer for you. The court would appoint a lawyer for you. Listen, in the uh, natural court as well as the spiritual court, there's a prosecutor in the courtroom. And the prosecutor's job is to accuse you of the crimes that you, the defendant, have been accused of committing. Doesn't mean that you did it, doesn't mean that you didn't do it. But the prosecutor's job is to accuse you of the crime and to see to it that he can persuade either the jury or the judge, depending on what type of trial it is, if he can persuade them to pronounce you as guilty. Pronounce you as guilty. So, so in, in the natural court as well as the spiritual court, this is what the prosecutor's job is. He, and the defendant, he, he is the, there to accuse the defendant of the crimes that he's been summoned there for. Uh, uh, um, and in both courts... There's a judge. As I said, sometimes there's a jury, sometimes there's not. Sometimes you can have a trial by judge. And uh, uh, the judge is the one who presides over the case. He presides over the trial, uh, uh, and he's uh, uh, justice. The judge represents justice, meaning that he's blind, meaning that he didn't see you walking with the orange jumpsuit. He's only there to hear and weigh out the balance of truth and not truth. And when there's a, a trial by jury, then the jury, after hearing the uh, prosecutor and after hearing the lawyer, they go off and they uh, uh, decide whether or not they're going to believe the case as it was presented either by the lawyer or by the prosecutor. And then they present that evidence to the judge. And then the judge asks the jury for their ruling. Amen. Amen. So this is how this is this is the way a court system is established. Both courts do have a judge. The judge is the one who presides over a case. And if the trial, as I said, if the trial is with the jury, then the jury is the one who's going to make a final decision as to whether or not the defendant is guilty or not guilty. Listen, I, I don't even know if we before I go further into this, I want to let you know the message today. If I hadn't already told you the message today is justified and declared not guilty. 
justified and declared not guilty. I just want to present that to you. Now, some may say that's a spoiler alert. You've already told us the ending of the story. Well, if I've already told you the ending, then allow me to fill you in with the meat and potatoes. Allow me to fill you in with the, the, uh, the getting on of the trial. Amen? So, all right, so listen. So, so even as I said, the, uh, uh, the, the, time, the, the title of the message today is Justified and Declared Not Guilty. Now, from Romans 5.1, we've already heard or we've learned that we have been justified by faith. Justified by faith. And if you were with us last week, we talked about it again of being justified and acquitted. And we talked about being justified. Justified means to be declared or made righteous in the sight of God. When you're justified, you've been declared or made righteous in the sight of God. Amen? So listen. Our opening scripture, it takes us into a spiritual courtroom. Our opening scripture takes us into a spiritual courtroom where Joshua is the high priest. And Joshua is the high priest. And it's him being the high priest, he's also the defendant. All right? He's the one who's been uh, summoned into the court. And he's the one who's been accused of crimes. So, will you ask, what is the crime? Okay, let me let you know this. Joshua is the high priest, and he is also the defendant, and he's standing in the court before the angel of the Lord. Now, in some versions, when you read this, it says the angel of the Lord. It's a capital A when you're talking about the angel. When you're talking about the angel being capital A, you're usually talking about God, or you're talking about the incarnate Jesus. Amen? Um, so, so, here it is in this case. The angel of the Lord, it has a capital A, so they were representing God. So, so if you can follow me now, God is the one who's presiding. He's the judge in this courtroom, in this spiritual courtroom. So you have Joshua, who's the high priest, and you have, uh, your, in this courtroom, you have your uh, prosecutor attorney, and the prosecutor in this case is Satan. So now, Joshua is on trial, and Joshua is representing the nation of Israel. He's representing the nation of Israel, okay? So this is the crime that he's, uh, uh, you're going to hear out as Satan lays out the crimes that Joshua or the nation of Israel has presented before God, who's the judge. In this, in this trial, uh, in, from this text of Je uh, Zechariah, there is no jury. So there's no trial by jury, but there is a, a prosecutor, there is a lawyer, and there is a judge. Amen? Amen. So listen. In Zechariah 3, 1, it says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right to accuse him. Satan is there to accuse Joshua. Joshua, the high priest, is on trial representing, uh, uh, he's been accused, he's on trial representing the nation of Israel, and his crimes that he's being accused of is being disobedient and being sinful. Notice that Satan, he's already taken his place at the prosecutor. So now as the trial is getting underway, Satan is the prosecutor. He's standing, he's stating his case before God, accusing Joshua of offenses of being disobedient. He's the, he the, uh, accusing Joshua of being rebellious. He's re uh, accusing Joshua of other sinful acts in the eyes of God. Now you have to remember that Joshua being the high priest, he's representing the nation of Israel. And if you know anything about the history of the nation of Israel, some of the stuff that Satan is going to say against Joshua, it may be true. Now, I know some of you don't want to believe that the devil is going to tell the truth because he's, uh, he's the father of lies and he has no truth in him. But if you also remember when he spoke to Jesus three times in the uh, when Jesus was in the wilderness, he started off by quoting the scriptures, but then he goes on his own way and putting his own seasoning in it, so therefore it makes it uh, illegitimate. It makes him a liar, okay? He's going to half quote, so this is why he's the father of lies. He's not going to present you the truth. It will kill him to tell you the truth. So here we are now. We're in this courtroom, and, and Satan is standing there as a prosecutor, and he's stating his case before God, accusing Joshua, the high priest, of offenses, of being disobedient. He's accusing him of being rebellious and other sinful acts. And as we said, if you know the history of the nation of Israel, anything that the devil is saying now against Joshua, we would almost want to guarantee it's true. I know you don't want to believe it, but you would want to almost guarantee it's true. Why? Because you remember the history of the nation of Israel. They've been rebellious. They've been disobedient. They've been known to backslide. They've been known to perform other sinful acts in the sight of God. They've been known also to be an adulteress, and they chose other. God has even said it. You went after other lovers. You left me, the one who truly loves you, and you paraded yourself after other nations, falling in love with them and the things that they would do. Okay? I'm not 
the prosecutor. I'm just telling you what jo what uh, Satan is, is his accusations against the defendant Joshua is. And as I said, it seems like Satan, he doesn't have to do much to present his case before God. He doesn't have to do much. Why? Because we know the history of the nation of Israel. We know the history. So it doesn't seem like Satan has to do much to present his case. He doesn't have to. So, so, so he, and if you're listening to him right now, Satan is doing a pretty good job presenting his case. He's just laying it out in the, in the uh, courtroom. He's presenting his facts and he's just throwing everything at Joshua. Satan has now opened up his bag of tricks in his courtroom and he began throwing everything at Joshua, the high priest. And I'm saying he's throwing everything, even the kitchen sink. Listen, Satan has nothing to hold back. He is standing here and he is accusing Joshua. He's accusing the nation of high treason. He's saying, God, these people whom you chose to love God these are the ones that you called your own look at everything that they've done in your sight oh Lord God look at everything that they're doing and you know they're wrong Satan is just having his day in the court and he's just throwing all accusations at him but hallelujah glory to God it seems that God said in his word he said listen I've heard enough the trial is, he said, God said, I heard enough. What do you mean he said he heard enough? Listen, the Bible tells us right here, and this is why I said God said he heard enough, because in verse 2, the Lord interrupts Satan. The Lord said, listen, I've heard enough. He said, hold on, Satan. The Lord interrupts Satan, and he said, the Lord said to Satan, Satan, the Lord, the Lord rebuke you. He says, Satan, even uh, uh, the Lord, who now and forever has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. He says, it's not just the log snatched and rescued from the fire. He's talking about Jerusalem. He's saying, he's talking about Joshua standing here, but Joshua, remember, he's representing Jerusalem. And the Lord says, it's not just the log that was snatched from the fire and rescued from the fire. Listen, listen. God is telling Satan, he's interrupting Satan, and he tells Satan, he says, listen, Satan was just starting his opening arguments. He's getting ready to lay out his case. He's throwing all this, all this on Joshua. He's throwing it. He's bringing everything, even the kitchen sink. But God, hallelujah, he just steps in and he says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Satan, even the Lord who now and forever has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. And then he said, is not this the log snatched and rescued from the fire? When God interrupts Satan as Satan starting his open arguments, you can almost hear uh, the Lord telling Satan, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. He tells Satan, the Lord rebuke you. When he says rebuke, a rebuke is a, a reprimand. In other words, the Lord scolded Satan. He reprimanded him in the courtroom. He says this, he says, listen, I don't want to hear anymore. The Lord rebuke you. God's saying, I don't want to hear any more about your accusations, Satan. And Satan, if you can, if you can imagine what's going on, he's saying, wait a minute, now I, I, I'm just getting started in my opening argument. Listen, God is saying, listen, he said, I don't want to hear it anymore. Satan, I don't want to hear any more of your accusations against Israel. And he goes on and he tells him, he says, even the Lord who now and forever has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. I rebuke you, Satan. This is what the Lord is saying. The Lord is a judge over the case. He didn't want to hear it anymore. He rebuked him. And to some degree, it didn't even matter what Israel did. It didn't matter to God. Why? Because God had made a promise to Abraham a long time ago that he would never give up on Israel. He said, I would never give up on them. He said, I would never put her away. I would never divorce that nation. This is what God is saying. So now he God is saying, listen, I know that they've been an adulterous nation. He says, I know that they, that even the ones that I called out and I, I I called them out. This is what God said. He called you out to be a holy nation, a royal, a royal holy nation. You are God's elect. And God said, I called you out. And even though I separated you, called you to myself, you still went after other lovers. You still was an adulterous nation. Everything that I provided for you, I've given you a home. I've given you milk flowing with milk and honey. I've taken you to promised land. I've given you anything that you need. But yet you left me jilted. You left me. And God says, listen, he knows that Satan is getting ready to pour this thing on. He knows it. But God has already made a promise. Hallelujah. And God is faithful over his word. He's going to perfect that which he, what he spoke over. And he spoke over Israel. And he spoke over him. And so God says, listen, in spite of how many times they would backslide, in spite of how many times they would commit adultery, God has always shown himself to be faithful. Why? Because he's a promise keeper. He remembered the promise that he made to Abraham. And God wasn't going to break that promise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God made you a promise and guess what? He's not going to break that promise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You need to realize what's going on. Listen. 
You would think, you would think, listen, one would think that Satan would have learned his lesson trying to present a case before God. You remember when Satan came to God with a story about Job and he, Satan knew that Job was going to curse God to his face. He said, Lord, he said, God, if you let him, if you just let me touch his body, if you just let me have my way with him, he will curse you to your face. And God said, okay, Satan, you think that's what's going to happen? Sure, go ahead on. But see, Satan is smart, but he's also dumb. He's so stupid that he didn't know that Job wasn't going to curse him. He's so smart that he's also dumb. Why? Because he thought that he can come in and represent or uh, be a prosecutor and accuse Joshua, accuse the nation of committing crimes that he knew that was dear to God's heart. But what did God say? God said, listen, I rebuke you, Satan. Why? Because God is a promise keeper. God is faithful to watch over his word. It didn't seem, it didn't seem like uh, uh, Satan was even understanding what was going on in the courtroom. You figured he would have learned his lesson from way back happened with Job, but Satan didn't learn his lesson. This is why I say he's still, he, he's, he's smart. Don't, don't get me wrong. Satan is an intelligent being. He's very intelligent, but he's also dumb when it comes to some of the things that you and I, boom, listen, what can separate us from the love of God? Hallelujah. Glory to God. What can separate you? What can separate you? So here it is this. Listen, Satan comes and uh, listen. Satan comes into the courtroom and he's standing and he's giving his accusations in the courtroom. He's making his accusations against Joshua. And here we see the outcome. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Satan comes to accuse uh, 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 Joshua and God turns the tables and he begins to rebuke Satan right there in the midst of the court. Right as Satan beginning his op opening arguments, God stands in and says, I rebuke him. And you can probably hear Satan uh, 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 really going off right about now. He's saying, listen, listen, God, that's not fair. That's not fair. He said, I didn't even get a chance to finish my opening argument. And, 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 and here it is now. You already interjected. You've already ruled against me. He said, God, you didn't even hear me. That's not fair. But let me let you know something about God. God is not fair. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Because if God was fair, we couldn't be here today. God would have zapped us out a long time ago. God is not fair, but he's just. He's a just God. He's the same God that said, I let the sun rise on the just as well as the unjust. Listen, you could be as holy and sanctified as you want, and your neighbor never to you could be living like the Dickens. But guess what? When the rain falls from the sky, his yard is going to get wet too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let me let you know something. God is not fair, but he is just. He is just. Remember when Jesus gave a parable about the sower? Uh, uh, he had, the, excuse me, the, uh, the farmer, and he asked people to come into the vineyard, and he said it didn't matter what time of the day it was going to be there. Whenever you get there, you're going to receive a day's wage. If it's one denarii, you were going to get it. Some got there and they worked eight hours. Some got there and they worked maybe the last 30 minutes, but they received the same wage, and people wanted to complain then and say, God is not fair. Listen, God is not fair. You're right, but he's just, and he's faithful to watch over his word. He's going to be a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, if God was fair, he would have wiped us out a long time ago. Why? Because he's he he he's 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 fair, and because he's not, because he's because he's a, a just God. He's not fair, but he's just. He's a just God. And by saying that he's just, God lets us know in his word that he's no respecter of person. This is why he allows the sun to shine on the just as well as the unjust. Because he's no respecter of person. Listen, after God rebukes Satan, God asks a question. God says this. He says, he says, is this not the log that was snatched and rescued from the fire? Is this not the log? He's talking about Joshua. He says, is this not the log who was snatched and rescued from the fire? Listen, you have to get an understanding of what this is interpretation is saying when God says is this not the law he's not talking about a piece of a tree he's not talking about that he's still talking about the nation of Israel but what God is saying if you hear the word log he's talking he's not talking about a piece of tree but he's talking about when Israel was in the uh, uh, grips the Jews were nearly consumed by the Babylonians fire when the Babylonians had them God God allowed the Babylonians to take them but he also pulled them back out he said, is not this the one that was snatched from the fire? God rescued them. He allowed their enemy to, to overtake them for what? To teach them a lesson. And it's some things that you and I do also. God allows us to do it, even though he knows that it's not the right thing for us to do. We know we shouldn't be going this way. But God will allow us to go so that he can teach us a lesson. The prodigal son had finally came to himself and said, it was better for me if I were back in my father's house where, where I would be able to receive a decent meal at least. Listen, 
God is so just to us. Hallelujah. This is, this is God is so just to us that he will even allow our enemies to overtake us. Remember what the Apostle Paul says? He said that there was a thorn in his side given to him to keep him from what? Being puffed up. Puffed up. To buffer him. God is so just. He's so just. He's so just. And, and, and somebody else will sit there and say he's not just. That's not just. Why would he allow that to happen? Because you don't know the purpose that God has for your life. You don't know. So, so God uses whatever instruments he needs to get his purpose done through you and I. Even if it means to allow your enemy to overtake you as in the Babylonians. But then God also says what? Is this not the log that was snatched and rescued? So God didn't intend for whatever it was to kill you. Didn't he not tell you also in his word that if you go through the fire, if you go through the flood, it will not overtake you? He said that I will be with you all the way even to the end. Even to the end, the end of the age, God is going to be with you. God is going to be. So this is what he's telling us right now. He said, is this not the log? The, he's not talking about a piece of wood. But God is acknowledging that even though they were led away into captivity by the ba Babylonians, that it is he, God, who still snatched them from the fire. It is he, God, who still rescued them. He still rescued them. In spite of how many times they would break his heart, God was always and will always be there for Israel. He'll always be there. And not just for Israel, but for you and I also, because we've been grafted into the family now. So God allows us to know that this word also applies to you and I also. Listen, he's always going to be there for us. This is the God we serve. He's going to be there. He's going to be there. Listen, verse 3, ja ja uh, 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 Zechariah, verse 3, it says, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Again, the angel has a capital A, so we're talking about the incarnate. We're talking about the Lord. The angel's representing the Lord. So Joshua stood before the Lord, who is the judge, is still in this courtroom. So Joshua stood before the Lord, and he, uh, you got to remember, he was, he was still wearing his filthy garments. He was still wearing that orange jumpsuit that had the letters, the D-O-J on the back of him. He belonged to the court system. He, this is how he came in. He came in wearing the garments of the, of the, uh, the state, so to say. He came in wearing the, the, the clothing of the state. And the Lord says now in verse 3, he says, Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel of the Lord. And the Bible lets us know in verse 4, he talking, uh, talking about the Lord spoke to those who were before him in the courtroom saying to remove the filthy garments from him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, as I said, if you've never been in the courtroom before, when the judge gives an order, he usually, if he wants you to see a piece of paper or you want to present a paper to the judge, you just can't walk up to the bench and go and present something to the judge. But what your judge do, you ask the judge and you say, judge, I need to come and approach the bench. I want to uh, bring you something. And the judge will say, uh, give it to the bailiff. So, so here it is in this situation right now. The bailiff is the a court appointed officer who's assigned to that courtroom and he watches over the courtroom in the presence with the judge. So listen, the so now the judge, the Lord sits there and he sees Joshua with this filthy uh, 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 jumpsuit on and he tells him, he says, listen, uh, uh, he's talking to the bailiff now. So he tells the bailiff, he says, uh, uh, verse 4, he's talking to the bailiff and he spoke to those before him saying, remove the filthy garments from him. Hallelujah, this is awesome in itself by itself. Listen, the Lord speaks to the bailiff and he commands him to remove the filthy garments from him. If, if you can uh, uh, follow me into the New Testament, listen, can you not see? see Jesus standing before the tomb of Lazarus and, 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 and as he's standing before the tomb of Lazarus he frees Lazarus when they rolled away the stone and Jesus stands there and he tells Lazarus to come forth and then Lazarus comes forth out of the claws of death the same as it was with Joshua. G uh, the Lord called him out of the fire of, of the Babylonians. Here it is now Joshua, um, excuse me uh, 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 um, uh, La Lazarus comes forth out of the, the uh, uh, claws of death and Jesus, he's standing before the Jesus and Jesus tells the people to untie him and set him free. Untie him and set him free. Get him free. Here it is Joshua. Take them filthy clothes off of him. You can listen when he says take the filthy clothes off of him. Listen, remember now, listen, Joshua was wearing his filthy clothes. When you go back and you see where Jesus was standing before the tomb of Lazarus, don't you remember it was Martha who told the Lord, she said, Lord, if you bring him up from out of 
there now, he's going to smell. He has a stench on him, Lord. Listen, I don't know where you were before the Lord brought you out, but you had a stench on you also. So don't think yourself more highly and mighty than, you, than you're hearing Joshua, than you're hearing Lazarus. You had a stench on you also. Because listen, that's what sin does. Sin allows us to sit in a certain stench. But then when God, hallelujah, calls you out, when God says he's going to change your clothing, when God said, Jesus said right there, untie him, set him free. Listen, Martha said he's going to stink, and yet Jesus called Lazarus out and told him to come forth, and when Lazarus came forth, he wasn't wearing the orange jumpsuit, but he was had on some grave clothes. He had on some smelly grave clothes, and they told him that he can take them clothes off, untie him, set him free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, you know when he called you out, you, you smell worse than a skunk. You stunk worse than a skunk. Maybe not you, but it was me, okay? I stunk worse than a skunk when he called me out. In spite of the filthy rags that I had on, hallelujah, glory to his name, God still presented me before him. He allowed me through Jesus to come and stand before him now. As a, and guess what? As you can hear it right now, the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have uh, uh, caused your wickedness to be taken away from you, and I will clothe you, I will clothe and beautify you with rich robes, robes of forgiveness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, maybe that doesn't mean nothing to you, but I'm going to tell you what it means to me. God said that in spite of the thing that I've done, Michael, in spite of what the thing that you've done, God said, I'm going to take the filthy garments away from you. And, and guess what? All your wickedness, God said, is going to be taken away from you, Michael. I'm going to remove your wickedness and I'm going to clothe you and I'm going to beautify you with uh, uh, rich robes, robes of forgiveness. Hallelujah. That's something we need to learn to do. We need to learn forgiveness because we're still holding on to things that somebody did to us back in the 1900s. And you know, even if you said, well, I wasn't born then. I was born in the 2000s. Well, you still holding on to something. You're probably holding on to something that happened just yesterday. But God said that I'm giving you forgiveness. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. He said, I'm going to uh, put on you a robes of forgiveness, meaning I'm never going to mention to you again the thing that you've done, Michael. See, see, God has caused my wickedness to be taken away from me. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Before the trial can even get underway, God has interceded on my behalf and he declared that I was not guilty, not guilty, not just in his sight, but in the sight of Satan also. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. God had this courtroom turned upside down. He done flipped the tables now where, where it seemed like I was underneath. Now I'm on top. See, I started from the bottom, but now I'm here. This is the thing that God has done for you and I. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Before the trial could get underway, God has already interceded on your behalf and he declared that you are not guilty, not just in his sight, but in the sight of Satan, in the sight of the prosecutor, in the sight of the one who was accused than you of the thing that you probably know you did. You know you did. Listen. Listen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You got to see what God is saying here. God said before, listen, didn't God tell you in his word, hallelujah, he says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Listen, people always want to hear that and say, oh, that's for those who are higher up in the, in, in the, uh, uh, in, in the church. Higher up, that means like the bishop, that means like the uh, 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 ministers and preachers. No, 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 no. Are you the anointed of God? And you should say, yes, I am. Yes, sir. Listen, maybe you don't walk in the office of a prophet. But maybe when the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, Saul, you may find yourself prophesying. And you may not even know how it happened because that's the Spirit of the Lord that came upon you. But nevertheless, you are the anointed of God. Every one of us who are his children are his anointed. And that scripture holds true and holds fast for everyone. That God says, touch not my anointed. He's talking to Satan. I know you quick to throw it up against your neighbor, even sitting right here in, in, in the church. You know, God said, touch not the anointed, touch. Listen, listen, listen. Don't take the scripture out of context. He's talking about all of us. We're all his children. We're all the anointed. We're all the elect of God. And God said in his word, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. God is not going to allow Satan. Satan, keep your hands off of that. That's my property. 
That's my property. And this is what God is telling us. God has said, I've caused your wickedness to be taken away from you. God has caused my wickedness to be taken away from me. And guess what? Not only that, I've been justified by faith and declared not guilty. Why? For something I've done? Absolutely not. I've been justified and declared not guilty because of what Jesus has done. Hallelujah. You can be able to say that for yourself. You should be able to say that. Listen, I've been justified and declared not guilty. Not by anything that I've done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But it is only through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Listen. Listen. Not only did God justify you, not only did he declare you not guilty, not only all of that, but God now has also removed the filthy garments from you. And God has clothed you and he said, listen, I'm going to clothe you and beautify you with rich royal robes. Hallelujah. Bless his name. God has just given, given you right now. You've just gone through a spiritual transformation. You had a spiritual makeover. Just that simple. It's just that simple. Listen, I know you've probably been in the gym all week long and for the last few years and it didn't work the way you still look in the mirror and you, you scale, you threw it out the window a long time ago. But when God gives you a makeover, you've been made over. Hallelujah. Bless his name. It doesn't matter what the scale looks like. It doesn't matter what the mirror wants to tell you. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it is he is the one who's made me. He's the one who says, listen, you've been justified. He's the one that said to take off those filthy garments off of you. And I'm going to clothe you and beautify you with rich robes. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Listen, listen. God has placed a robe, robes of forgiveness upon you and I. And not just because of anything we have done, but God has done it because of what Jesus has done. Listen, we've been justified by faith through Jesus Christ. That's it. And Zechariah chapter 5, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, verse 5 of that same scripture, and it says, And I, Zechariah, said, let, him, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed them with rich garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Listen, God wants us to know that, listen, he's the only one who can clean us up from head to toe. He's the only one. Put a new turban on him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. I've got new sandals for you. I got robes for you. I got a turban for you. Hallelujah. You better give God some glory for the things not that you've done. Listen, you haven't done a thing. This is what God has already he done for you. He's done it for you. God said, listen, hallelujah, listen. God wants you to know that he's the only one that can clean us up from head to toe. God is the only one who can remove that, that stench of sin and completely off of you. Only God can do it. I don't care how much uh, a washing you want to put on yourself. Listen, you can stand under Niagara Falls with a bar of soap all day long. God is the only one that can remove that stench of, uh, of sin of away from you. You hear? Listen, God is the only one who can declare that you and I have been justified. Justified by faith. God is the only one who can rebuke Satan. God rebukes Satan in the middle of his opening arguments. God declares that you and I are not guilty. Hallelujah. Bless his name. God is the one who commands the removal of our filthy rags so that he may clothe us and so that he may beautify us with new rich robes. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Listen, 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 listen. Again, I want to make sure, I want to make sure that you are understanding that, that you're hearing me clearly, that you've been justified and you've been declared not guilty, not by anything you've done on your own, but through Jesus Christ. You've been justified by faith and we are not no longer at war with God because that's what the scripture says. We were at enemies with God. We were at war with God, but now we are no longer at war with God because we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Bless his name. Listen, we were enemies of the state. Hallelujah. But then Jesus, hallelujah, listen, he allowed us to be able to come and receive something that we couldn't do on our own. It's nothing that you and I have done. This is done because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. So, so, so listen, as I said, I want to make sure that you are aware of that. You are aware of it. It's nothing that you and I did. Listen, you remember, uh, oh, he used to sing the song, when I think of Jesus and, and, and how he set me free, when I think of Jesus and all he did for me, I can dance, 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 dance all night, all night. Listen, sometimes when I get to thinking about the things that Jesus did to me, dancing isn't one of the things that come to my mind. Sometimes that, uh, uh, what comes to my mind is when I start thinking about the things that Jesus did, uh, uh, dancing isn't one of them, but worship. 
it comes in the worship comes into my mind. And when I really think about when I was really even in the wilderness, uh, uh, going through a wilderness experience, going through a spirit, a time of hardship, going through uh, uh, those types of times where we, if you're in a hardship, that's going to draw you near to God like you've never been before. You'll find yourself praying like you've never prayed before when you're in a situation, something like that. Listen, when I think about the things that Jesus dancing may not be, it may not be. But it may allow me to go into worship and it may allow the tears to begin to just stream from my eyes because I can begin to imagine, remember the things that Jesus had brought me through. Tears of joy and appreciation will f uh, freely flow from me as I think about the things that Jesus has done for me. Listen, I get elated. I get joy when I think about what Jesus has done for me. I get uncontrollable joy. Listen, I get joy down in my soul when I think about where I was even walking with him as I was going through some valley experiences and I have to just look back and I see how he carried me, how he kept me even when I didn't want to keep myself even when there was a time when I thought about throwing in the towel, even when there was a time when I said, Lord, are you sure I'm the one that you want to be able to do the things that you're asking me to do? And guess what? He's allowed me to see it. So yeah, there's some times when I, when I think about Jesus, dancing ain't one of them. I can dance. I thank God. But then there's some times where I just sit and I begin to worship and I begin to thank him and I begin to praise him and I begin to cry out with joy, tears of joy flowing down from my face because I know that if it had not been the Lord who was on my side, even though I've been saved, even though I've been born again, even though I've been blood washed, a devil chasing demon destroyer, I know that there's some things and some times and still some times to come that I have to hold fast to the word of God and cling to God like there is no tomorrow. So when I think of those things, hallelujah, bless his name, bless his name. Now it's not a dancing time. It's a joyous time. And tears of joy will begin to flow because of the worship, because of worship, listen, because of joy, because of what Jesus has already done for me, because of what he's brought me through, and, and because he declared me not guilty, because he justified me, because he acquitted me. Nothing I've done on my own, but it's what Jesus has done for me. Listen, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses uh, 4 through 6, it tells us, it says, But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our wrongdoings, made us alive together with Christ. For by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, with who? With Jesus, and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, it doesn't matter. Do you know this is why I can be an American citizen? I can be a citizen of the earth, but I'm still a citizen of heaven. I have a dual citizenship, dual citizenship no matter where in the earth I am, because I'm also have a kingdom, a kingdom, a, 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 a citizenship. I have a dual citizenship that allows me to enter into the kingdom. Listen, but God, the scripture tells us right here, it says, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love for us, where Wherein we, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins and God has quickened us together with Christ. Listen, you and I have done nothing to deserve the love that God has bestowed upon us. We're just like Joshua in the courtroom. We are the nation of Israel standing before Satan as he's accusing us. But God, hallelujah, because of his love for us. We were friends of God. We were enemies of God. We were enemies of the state, enemies of the kingdom. We didn't do anything to promote the kingdom. We did everything we could to keep away from God and those who spoke like God. We didn't want to hear it, but God in his great love for us, hallelujah, his great love for us, even when we were dead in our sins, have quickened us together with Christ. Nothing you or I have done, for it is by grace you have been saved. And God has, this is what the scripture tells us, and God has. It doesn't mean that he's going to do it, it says has, meaning it's already taken place. And God has, what? What does he do? What did he do? And God has already done, meaning that we don't have to wait for it. God has already raised us up together with Jesus, and God has made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ 
Jesus. That's why I have dual citizenship. Yes, I'm a citizen of the United States, but I'm also a citizen of the earth, which is more important. But more important is I'm a citizen of heaven. I have access into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And I don't have to wait for it because God has already given it to me that I'm seated as you're listening to me right now. I'm seated also in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. God has already raised us up together. God has made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And when Jesus died, guess what? When Jesus died, we died with him. When Jesus was uh, uh, buried, we were buried with him. And when he rose up, when God raised Jesus from the, from the grave, we rose up with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We were in him. We are in who? In Christ. We're in Jesus. We're in Jesus in his death. We're in Jesus in his burial. And we're in Jesus when God raised Je Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We were raised up with him. We were raised up with him. So Jesus resurrected was your resurrection. Jesus' resurrection, it was my resurrection. We were resurrected, we were raised up with Jesus, and we are justified by faith, and we've been declared not guilty, and the Bible tells us that all accusations against the prosecutor, a.k.a. Satan, have been uh, uh, dismissed. All charges have been dropped and you've been found not guilty. Any charges that Satan rails against you and I, the Bible lets us know that those charges have been nailed to the cross with Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Listen, you said, where was that at, preacher? I must have missed that scripture. Well, I'm glad you asked. Listen, in Colossians 2.14, it says, having the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us. And he, who? God. God has taken it out of the way having it nailed to the cross so when satan opens his mouth to accuse you and i we just let him know it's nailed to the cross it has nothing to do with me anymore i've been declared not guilty i've been justified by through jesus christ and all your accusations every last one of them the bible tells us having canceled the certificate of debt consisting of decree degrees against us decrees against us listen We've had a laundry list of things that were against us. Why? Because we were hostile to God. We were hostile to God. But hallelujah, God has taken it out. Taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Our sins were nailed to the cross with Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. Listen, when God resurrected Jesus, we were resurrected with him. But listen, our sins weren't resurrected. Don't get this misunderstanding. We were resurrected with Jesus, but our sins were not resurrected with Jesus. They remained dead. And they, they, they remained dead. Why? Because we are a new creation now. You can't, you can't bring that sin in here into this thing anymore because those things have been passed away. What are you talking about, preacher? In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it tells us, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, this is a new person, a new creation, and the old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. So, so you've been resurrected with Christ, and the sin is now dead, and we are alive in him. In who? In Christ. We are alive in, in Christ. So Romans 4, 24 and 25 it tells us it says but for our sake to whom uh, it will be credited to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead listen it's for our sake for us it's going to be a credit to us to who, who believe in him who's him God we have to believe in God who did what God raised our Lord Jesus from the dead and guess what he God um, it's he Jesus who was delivered over Jesus was delivered over because of our wrongdoings. And guess what? He was raised now for our justification. Hallelujah. You need to grab hold of that. Jesus paid a sinner's death. He was delivered over for our wrongdoings. Now, okay, you didn't do anything. Mine. He was delivered over for my sins. Jesus was delivered over. He stood a trial that I should have stood in. But he was delivered over for me. And guess what? Because he was delivered over for me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because of my wrongdoings. The Bible lets us know that because of that, now I was raised because of his justification. Raised up. We're justified by his death. We're justified by his resurrection. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You and I have been raised up. You and I have been justified. Listen. When Jesus... When Jesus was raised from the dead, he became the head of this new creation. He became our head now because Jesus was raised up. And that's why the Bible tells us, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
You're not the same person you were be before before you got born again. And if truth be told, guess what? Guess what? You're not even the same person who were born to your biological parents. Truth be told, you're not that person anymore because you're a new creation. You're a new creation. You're not that one. That one there who was born of your parents in the biological, that person has died already. That person's already been dead. That person was dead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That old man died in Christ and the new you has been born and you were born. When you were born, you were born again. Not born again to sin. That nature is dead. It's dead. But we, 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 we have been born again. We're born again. Listen. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. It tells us, it says, Therefore, we were buried. We are buried with him talking about Jesus, we are buried with him by baptism unto death, into death. And, and, and that like, as Christ raised from the dead by the glory of God, by the glory of the Father, even so, we should also walk in the newness of life. Listen, my brothers and sisters, listen. Christ, we've been raised with Christ. We walk into a newness of life. This is why, not just me, but God is urging us to walk in consciousness of the new light, of this new life. Walk in consciousness of the light of Jesus Christ. The light is of your new life, is your, uh, uh, the nature, is your new nature in Christ. You're not that old sinful person anymore. That's not you. That's not me. We walk with our held, held our head held high. We we keep our shoulders pinned back when we walk in, and we're walking knowing that we've been justified, knowing that we've been declared not guilty, knowing that we are the righteousness of Him, of Christ Jesus. We have to remember also that no weapon formed against us, none of the accusations formed against us by Satan, is ever going to prosper. It is never going to prosper. Never. Now listen, listen. I don't want anyone to misunderstand any of these messages talking about being justified, meaning that you have a green light to go and sin. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If you know that you are, are, are doing something, you're struggling in certain areas, you just ask for repentance. You go before the Lord and you ask for uh, repentance, and then you go the other way. That's what repentance is now. You don't continue to go on that path. God, the Bible lets us know that he is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. He is. But we can't continue to do those things and still look to God and asking him to help us. If you need that type of help, then you need to get into a real prayer group and, 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 and confess. And tell, get yourself an accountability partner that you need somebody to help you with. Because, listen, the word of God is forever established, and he doesn't wish for anyone to perish. He wants us all, and to share this word also, so that they may know, the dying world may know that there's somebody who's already died, that you don't have to live the way that you're living. Amen? Listen, I don't want to delay you much longer. I appreciate you being here. But I just want to ask a question. If there's one somebody who's listening right now who doesn't know Jesus for the pardoning of your sin, Now's your opportunity. Now's your time to be in the numbers, declaring yourself in the numbers of those who've been justified and declared not guilty. This is your opportunity. You can just say, listen, Jesus, I know I've made a mess of things in my life, and I'm asking you now to come into my life and to create in me a clean heart, your heart, and to renew within me the right spirit. I know that I was going the wrong way. I know that all the accusations against me by the prosecutor Satan were true. I know that, but I don't want to live that way anymore. I've come to realize that you are the only way. And if that's you and you receive in Jesus Christ as now as your Lord and Savior, we thank God for you. And listen, reach out. You can, you can reach out to us because you can't do this Christian walk by yourself. That's where the devil wants to find you, by yourself, so he can entrap you. He can lay snares for you. But as long as you're connected to a body of believers, we can help you navigate your way through this uh, earthly life so that we can all spend eternity in the Father's presence. Amen? Amen. Listen, I think, again, I thank God for you being here. I thank God that this message would, would help somebody to allow them to know that you've been justified, declared not guilty in the name of Jesus. Amen? So I just want to take a few minutes. I just want to pray, pray us out, and I just continue to trust God 
that he's going to do what he said he's going to do in your life. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who have assembled this day. Father, we know that there's nothing we can do on our own. We know that it is only because of Jesus that we've been justified, that we've been declared not guilty. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for cleaning us up. We thank you for removing the stench of sin. Father, we thank you for the new robes. We thank you for the new turban. We thank you, O oh Lord, in knowing that you are the only one who can forever clean us up and separate us from this sin. Father, we thank you for Jesus going to the cross, dying a sinner's death, dying the death that I deserve, dying the death that we deserve, dying the death that this world deserve. Father, we thank you that Jesus thought not of himself, but he presented himself as the only living sacrifice to do what no one else was able to do, that we may be able to declare and decree that we've been justified. Nothing that we've done, but we've been justified through Jesus Christ. Father, I pray now as your children go through the rest of this week that you will continue to watch over them, that you will open doors of opportunity before them, and the doors that you have closed before them, Father, allow them to know that that's not going to open. Give them the strength and the courage to move on, to go in the direction that you're leading them to go. Yesterday is not coming back, so Father, continue to help them, lead them, and guide them now. Pour out your Spirit upon them in these days like no other before. Draw them nearer to you, O Lord. Continue to magnify your presence in every area of their life for your purpose and your glory is my prayer and I know that as this prayer is being heard in heaven the manifestation will fall fresh upon them now father for those who are in uh, areas right now in areas of financial hardship I pray that you will open the window of heaven and just pour them out a financial blessing that they didn't have room enough to receive father for those who are in a place right now where they're needing a uh, 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 homes and they, they're, they're homeless Lord I pray that you will meet their need right now that you will have a, a, a way that they may be able to have a roof over their head food in their stomach and clean water to drink Father I know that you are Jehovah Jireh and you shall meet the need of these your people according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus so Father as I lift it up now before you I know that you've already heard it I know that you're the one who's causing all things to work together for their good so let it be as you did declared to be in Christ Jesus' name. I give you praise, I give you honor, and I glorify you. It is in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen again. Amen again. Listen, may God continue to bless you as you go through the rest of this week. May he continue to bless you. May he continue to cover you. May he continue to keep you. May he continue to provide for you in Christ Jesus' name. And as you go through the rest of this week, don't forget to make time for God because God has already made time for you. If you are being blessed by the words from Manna from Heaven Ministries and would like to give a donation or a contribution, please go to the link below. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.